Hey guys, so you've probably heard of No Mo May. Um, I have mixed feelings about this. I kind of think about it as No Shave November. For some people, it's a really good look. For other people, it is not. So at my local golf course here, there has been sections when they have not mowed. Let me show you. So you can see they've mowed in some areas and they've stopped mowing in others. And what do you get when you stop mowing? You get long grass. So the idea, I think, is that meadows are good for bees, and that's true. But we need to be clear that just long grass is not the same thing as a meadow. You can see there were dandelions in here that have gone to seed, and those dandelions only lasted for a couple days before they went to seed. So really, this is not what I would call bee habitat. Um, my thinking is that while there's good intention behind this no mow may movement, I think we need to be much more intentional about providing bee habitat. For example, planting native flowers. We do have some flowers in this no mow area, but this is an invasive weed and it's not really visited by very many bees. So I guess there's a lot more we need to do than just stopping the cutting of grass in May. So people are saying, stop mowing your lawn to create habitat for bees to help, quote, save the bees. The problem I have with that is, at least here in Utah where I live, if you stop mowing your lawn, you're not really creating habitat for bees. You really have to be more purposeful. Plant native flowers, leave bare dirt for nesting sites. Don't just assume that when you stop cutting your grass, you are creating bee habitat. So, in my opinion, the first step to saving the bees is to learn about the bees and what their needs are, and then try to meet those needs with a variety of different flowers, variety of habitat types. We can make efforts in our yard to help bees, but just simply stopping the act of mowing your lawn, it's really not the silver bullet that's gonna help the bees.